Hi, today we are going to talk about index tuning. It's a huge topic, so uh, I should not get overwhelmed when I'm talking to you about indexes. Today I will specifically focus on multi-column seeking. When you create a non-clustered index, as you might know, it is a separate storage object. And by the virtue of being a B3 structure, it has the root page, the intermediate levels, and the leaf level. When you create a non-clustered index, you want SQL Server database engine to traverse through the index. And seeking capability is one of the greatest performance benefit of creating uh, the non-clustered index. Now, as you know, index by itself uh, does not improve performance. It just helps you get to the data faster. And uh, seeking is one way how you can get faster to the data. So you traverse from the uh, root page to the intermediate level and to the leaf level. Um, in many cases, um, the optimizer might decide not to seek but uh, to scan, which means you are scanning the leaf level of the data. And when you scan, you are touching all the records from you know the first page to the last page. And of course, scanning is going to be much more expensive than seeking. Now, these are general uh, stuff that I'm talking about. There are always exceptions to these cases that I'm mentioning. And because the topic is so huge and sometimes the workload patterns, the queries, the different indexing strategies that you can do, they're, uh, they're so complicated that sometimes you just, um, uh, uh, there are all these specific cases and exceptions, but these are generalized uh, stuff that I'm talking about in most cases are uh, this is applicable. Now, specifically when I talk about this uh, multi-column seeking, when you create a non-clustered index, you could create a single column index or a multi-column index. Single column means your index key is just one column. So you, let's say you create a non-clustered index on email address and you know put email address in brackets. So this is a single column in index. When you create a multi-column index, something like create non-clustered index on first name, comma, last name, comma, email address. Now you have three columns. So your index key is actually a combination of column one, column two, and column three. Now remember, when you are searching uh, on this index uh, key value, it, it's a left-based subset. So searching happens from left to right. And uh, in a single column index, things are pretty straightforward. You just have one column value to seek on. But when you have multiple columns, then things get a little more complicated. So going by the rule of uh, SQL optimizer here, you cannot seek on the second column if you're not seeking on the first column. Now, these are the tricky things that I want to uh, show you with seek predicates and residual predicate, etc., And maybe um, this uh, quick video and, and the demo that I'm going to show you will help you design better indexes. So um, let's understand more about this concept with the help of a demo. And as usual, no more slides. Let's uh, jump to the demos straight away. So in this demo, I am going to use the AdventureWorks database. Let's use AdventureWorks and there is a, a table here called person.contact. If I show you all the records of person.contact, there is first name, middle name, last name, and then there are two columns, email address and email promotion. Of course, a couple of other columns that I'm not going to use in this index demo. I will use some of these columns out here. Back to the code. Uh, let's make a copy of uh, person.contact as contact2. So the moment you do the select star into, you know that now person dot contact to. So person is my schema, contact to is a table, and this is now a heap. So there is this heap, uh, which means there is no clustered index on this table. And of course, there is no non-clustered index as well. Now, first things uh, first, we will create a clustered index on this uh, table, and the column is contact ID, which means now the data is going to be rearranged. All the pages are going to be rearranged and are going to be sorted physically by this column contact ID. So a quick reminder, you have this table contact ID and now you have one uh, and of course the only clustered index on this table. Now here is the query for you. Now this is like a small uh, mathematical problem. You have this uh, select statement and you want to retrieve contact ID, first name and email promotion from this uh, table. And you have filters, uh, rather predicates on all these columns. First name, like L% 
email promotion is equal to one and contact ID is less than 10,000. So mind you, there are approximately 19,000 records. Let's for the sake of discussion, uh, assume that there are 20,000 records and these are the three predicates. Option max top one can be ignored uh, just for the sake of demonstration. Now, if I do a help index on uh, use the stored procedure to see what currently exists on contact two, and as I said, you just have the uh, contact ID, uh, uh, only the clustered index there. The zoom thing did not work so well. Anyway, now let's uh, look at, so you have to, so what is the problem? The problem at hand is that you have to design a non-clustered index for uh, this query. Now, uh, remember, uh, there are there are tons and tons of best practices when it comes to designing indexes uh, in SQL Server. And of course, the first one is you should never design an index for just one workload or for just one query. You should try to see that a particular index should benefit multiple workloads, multiple queries. But remember, this is just a demo and I'm just trying to show you um, something about index tuning and about how the SQL Query Optimizer works. So for the sake of this uh, demo, let's design a non-clustered index that gives maximum performance for this query. Um, and a reminder again, you already have a clustered index on contact ID. So what I did, I have created a few indexing options and from option one, all the way to option 13, I have created a couple of permutations and combinations that you could use to create on uh, to, um, to create an index on this particular object contact ID. Now let's go by quickly by the round of elimination and I'm going to do that very, very quickly. Remember, you already have a clustered index on um, this table, which is contact ID. So when you create a non-clustered index, the clustering key is automatically included in every non-clustered index. Remember, even if your table is a heap, the row identifier is automatically included in every non-clustered index. So I need not create a non-clustered index and include contact ID there. So that's the first thing. Uh, so the second thing is, uh, first name and email promotion. So these are the only two columns I am left with. If of course I don't have to use contact ID in my index key formation because it's already a clustered index uh, key. So I am only left with first name and email promotion. Now, first name and email pro uh, promotion, these two columns, the question is, can I seek on these columns? So if I look at the predicates, first uh, name like L percent, can I seek on it? Yes, I can seek on it. If this was something like percent %l, then of course I would not be able to uh, seek on it. So this one I can definitely seek on. And then email promotion equals to one. Can I seek on email promotion with this predicate? Yes, I can seek. So I can actually seek on both first name and email promotion. And what about contact ID? Well, as I mentioned before, contact ID is already included by default in the non-clustered index because that is the clustering key. So I'm left with these two um, keys, first name and email promotion. And if I can seek on both of them, then I can be sure that I need not put them in include uh, keyword. Now, what I mean by include keyword? So let's go back to the indexing options and you can see that, uh, let's say, Let's look at the this one, this particular index uh, option two. I'm creating a non-clustered index um, on contact two and my, my non-clustering key is first name. This is my index key and I include email promotion. Uh, this means that I am telling the storage engine that email promotion as, as the column values should not be there in the root page and the intermediate pages. It should only be available uh, in the leaf level, which means this is only for the purpose of retrieval. Uh, typically, we use this uh, include uh, functionality for covering index purposes, which means uh, some of these columns on which you don't want to see, you can put them on include so that they are available for retrieval, which makes this index as a covering index. A covering index is an index which covers the entire query and it might just cover one query and not others. Uh, but as I, uh, as we discussed before, uh, these two columns, the first name and email promotion, we can actually seek on both of them. So why put email promotion in include? We should get benefited from the seeking capability. We should take advantage of that. So let's go by quick round of elimination option one. 
I don't want to use include. I want to put both of them in my uh, composite key formation. So this is also called as uh, a non-clustered composite index because I'm using multiple columns. Again, include I don't need because I want to put email promotion uh, there in the key formation. First name, I can seek on first name. I should not put include again. Remember, uh, include again. I mean, search Google and you can learn more about uh, include. Remember, any column that you put in include, you will not be able to seek on that column because that column value is not contained in the root page and the intermediate page. Contact ID, I don't need contact ID in any of the indexes. So wherever I see contact ID, I'm just going to get rid of those options. Remember, I have taken all possible permutations and combinations here. And the moment I see contact ID, I just don't need them. Do I need to create an index like this? So these are all now composite options, composite one, two, three, four, and five. And first name, email promotion, contact ID. So as I said, I don't need contact ID, so I can get rid of this. Option 10, again, I don't need. Option 11, again, contact ID, I don't need. This leaves me with the two options, uh, composite four and composite five. Composite four is first name, comma, email promotion, and composite five is email promotion, comma, first name. So really the difference between the two is the order of columns. Now remember, the order of columns in your select query, in your select list does not matter but the order of columns in your composite index key formation, it does matter and it is very critical. So first name comma email promotion, the index key formation is not the same as email promotion comma first name. Now given these two indexes, but of course both of them are in a way covering indexes because uh, contact ID is already automatically part of uh, both the indexes and you're of course including first name and email promotion also. And then you can, uh, can you um, also uh, seek on uh, both of them. So the point is let's go and create both uh, uh, first name and email promotion. So we, can, we will create composite four as well as composite five. And you know what, let's go ahead and create both of them and let's see um, and uh, let the optimizer choose uh, whatever it wants. So I'm going to go ahead and create both the indexes, composite four and composite five gets created. Now remember, composite four uses first name comma email promotion. That's the index and composite five is email promotion um, comma first name. Um, there you go. And this was the query. And now let's go ahead and run this query and I will include actual execution plan to see which index is being used. And I hope the zoom in works properly. Yes. Can I zoom in here? Okay, fair enough. I can zoom and I can show you a few things. Let's go and execute. This is the climax. Let's execute and you get the data out. And if we go into the execution plan, you have the seeking here and what which object is being used here. So the optimizer actually uses contact composite five and you can see that it does not use contact composite four. Now, why has the optimizer chosen contact composite five over contact composite four? First things first, will the optimizer get and or will SQL Server database engine get the same performance if it had to use contact composite four? Or is it that it has just randomly chosen contact composite five? Or is it the most recent index that we have created? And that's why it gets chosen, which means four and five, both the indexes are same in terms of the uh, searching uh, criteria because uh, both the columns are being seeked upon and both the columns are present in the index as well. A lot of questions. So why not do something? Um, we take this one and we take this one too and let's put them next to each other here. And uh, in this query, I'm going to force contact composite four with, um, with five because this one is, uh, the optimizer is going to choose five and here I'm forcing four. And is the performance difference same from the perspective of optimizer? Let's go and execute and execution plan is already turned on. You get the data out. And if we go into the execution plan and now the most interesting thing is here you are seeking and you get contact composite five and this one uses contact composite four because you use the index hint and you force the use of this index. What about performance? So if we go and zoom in a bit for me to show you the performance, there you go. So five used 35% uh, that's the uh, performance and this one is 65%. So that's the relative cost for the entire batch. 
uh, out of 100%, 35% is being used by composite 5 and 65 by composite 4. So there is clearly a performance difference between 5 and 4. So what's really going on? Well, let's go and uh, try to understand uh, the rule of the optimizer here. In contact composite 5, uh, which is, um, let's go back and look into this one, email promotion comma first name. So why has SQL Server chosen this one over 4? Remember, look at the query here. The query email promotion uses a equality predicate and that makes all the difference here. So uh, the rule of the optimizer is you can seek on the second column only if there is an equality predicate on the first column. Uh, going by that rule, the optimizer is able to seek on both the columns, first name and email promotion, because contact composite 5, email promotion is the first column. So email promotion is using equality predicate. It's the first column, so it can seek on email promotion. And because it's an equality predicate, it can seek on the second column, which is first name. In case of contact composite 4, where first name is the first column and it does not use the equality predicate it uses the like operator it can seek on first name but it cannot seek on email promotion so seeking on the first column uh, which is the um, seekable predicate uh, email promotion equals to one in case of contact composite four actually becomes the residual predicate so residual predicate here is a predicate on which you are not able to seek and that's why I use these informal terms that um, the contact composite 5 is a fully seekable uh, index in, in case of this query, in case of this example, and contact composite 4 is partially seekable. And just to repeat again, the optimizer is able to seek on both the columns because there is an equality predicate in the first one here, email promotion. And in case of contact composite 4, because the first name predicate does not use an equal to operator, it can seek on first name but cannot seek on email promotion. Well, this topic is uh, much, much more bigger than this quick demo and it is very interesting and I would have actually um, turned on uh, statistics time and IO to sh actually show you the read uh, performance and the execution time performance as well. But yeah, that's uh, good enough for you to get the idea that yes, uh, in a multi-column index, there are some of these rules that we need to understand and how you can actually make your uh, indexes fully seekable to get the best performance out of them. Remember, um, this was a quick demo only focusing on one part. There are, as I said before, there are many best practices and we just cannot generalize because indexes is such a thing that there are exceptions to everything that we are talking about. And in the SQL community, in the SQL family, we always say it depends uh, just uh, as a um, light moment, uh, you know, sometimes when there are so many scenarios to deal with. So yeah, every every scenario, every example has to be taken in its own entirety. Uh, to really um, understand the concepts well. Uh, hope you like this one. With this, thank you very much. Hope this video was worth your time. See you soon in another video.